Hello everyone, let's go ahead and take a look at the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic. Now before we get to this, I want to go ahead and take a look at a simple example. Now this is what we've been doing. We have a quadratic equation, and how do you go about solving the quadratic equation? Well, in this particular case we can factor, so we'll factor, and then by the zero product property, we set each one of those factors to go to zero, and we solve for the value of x. Now what we're going to do in this particular section is that we're going to start off with the roots. If we start off with the roots, then I know that I can set each one of those roots equal to zero. And then after that, these two particular values, these two particular parts here and here become the factors, which can still be set equal to zero by the zero product property. If I distribute, I come up with the original quadratic equation that I started off with. So this reversal, this reverse process that we're using to go from here to here is what we're going to have to apply next. So take a look. Okay, so given that we have ax squared plus bx plus c is equal to zero, we'll start off with that. And let's assume that it has roots alpha or beta. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each one of these equations to be equal to zero. And then each one of these parts here are going to become the factors, which is still equal to zero because of the zero product property. If I distribute, I get this. And then if I factor out the x, I come up with this, where the coefficient of the linear term is going to be the opposite of alpha plus beta. Okay, now what I'm going to do then is I'm going to try to compare this to what I started off with, which was of course what had generated these roots. Now the only thing that I'm having trouble with here is that the coefficient of my quadratic term is not the same. Here it's a and here it's one. So in order to make a better comparison between these two equivalent equations, I need to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by a, so that I come up with x squared plus b over ax plus c over a is equal to zero. Now I can very easily compare these two equivalent equations. Now if I go ahead and take a look at the sum of the roots, now the roots we said was alpha and beta. If I add those two together, it's just alpha plus beta. Now, alpha plus beta is right here. That's associated with the coefficient of x. The coefficient of x here is b over a. Now, the only difference is that this is a negative and this is a positive. So what I can say then is that the sum of the roots, which was alpha plus beta, which is here, is actually going to be equal to the opposite of b over a, which is here. In the same respect, I can also go ahead and say that the product of the roots, which is right here, this is the linear uh, the constant term, is going to be exactly the same thing as this right here, which is c over a, which is again the constant term. So what I have then is that the sum of the roots, which is going to be equal to alpha plus beta, for a quadratic, that is actually going to be equal to minus b over a. And for the product of the roots, oops, sorry, for the product of the roots, we can say that that's going to be equal to c over a. Okay, so this is again the two initial statements that we really need to remember regarding the sum and product of the roots of a quadratic. Now let's go ahead and take a look at an example. Now remember what we're doing is we're trying to figure out how to find the roots given uh, how to find the quadratic given the roots. So here's the situation. Let's say, for example, we have kx squared minus 6x plus k minus 2 is equal to 0. And of course, k is, cannot be equal to 0. So we have right here a quadratic equation. Now, one root is double the other. So what we're trying to do now is go ahead and find the quadratic and the roots that are produced. Now, it's saying that one root is double the other. So let the roots be x is equal to alpha and the other root being twice that much, so x is equal to 2 alpha. Then what I can do is I can do this. I know that the sum of the roots, which is alpha plus beta, is going to be equal to negative b over a. Now if I go ahead and take a look at my original quadratic equation, the coefficient of the linear term is minus 6. A 
which is the coefficient of the quadratic term, is k. So what I have now is I have the opposite of negative 6 divided by k should be equal to the sum of the roots, and the sum of the roots is x plus 2 alpha, uh, alpha plus 2 alpha, which is 3 alpha. So if I simplify that, I just come up with 6 over k is equal to 3 alpha. Now, let's go ahead and take a look at the product of the roots, which of course is going to be alpha times beta. And that we know is going to be c over a. So c over a is going to be equal to alpha times it by 2 alpha, because that's what the other root is. And c, in this particular quadratic equation here, is the constant term, and the constant term is k minus 2. The coefficient of the quadratic term is again k, so I have k minus 2 over k is equal to, well, alpha times it by 2 alpha is going to be 2 alpha squared. Now, take a look at what we got. We have this equation here, and we have this equation here. Okay? I have two equations, 6 over k is equal to 3 alpha, and k minus 2 over k equals 2 alpha squared, and I have two variables, k and alpha. If I have two equations and two variables, of course I can solve it using a system of equations. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the substitution method. I'm going to solve for alpha here. Alpha then, by dividing both sides by 3, will yield 2 over k. And I'm going to substitute that into this equation here to come up with k minus 2 over k is equal to 2 times the quantity 2 over k squared. Now 2 over k squared is going to be 4 over k squared times that by 2, that's 8 over k squared. I have a proportion here, so now I can go ahead and cross multiply to come up with k to the third minus 2k squared is equal to 8k. And then I set this particular equation to be equal to 0, factor out a k, factor the quadratic, and I come up with k is equal to 0, or k is equal to 4, or k is equal to negative 2. Now, we know for a fact that k cannot be equal to 0. Because in our original problem, we know that k cannot be equal to 0, otherwise this is no longer a quadratic. So the only solutions that I have now for k is k is equal to 4, or k is equal to negative 2. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to come back here to answer my question. Now if k is equal to 4, then what that means is that alpha, which is 2 over k, is going to be equal to 2 over 4, or 1 half. Now given that fact, I can now go ahead and find the quadratic as well as the roots without having to do much work. Because the quadratic here is based upon the value of k. So I know that that's going to be 4k squared minus 6k and then plus 4 minus 2, which is of course plus 2 is equal to 0. Now if I wanted to, I could of course go ahead and do the process of factorizing or using the quadratic formula. But I already know that the roots are x is equal to alpha and x is or x is equal to 2 alpha. So therefore, I know that it is going to be equal to 1 half because alpha is equal to 1 half or 2 times that, so x is going to be equal to 1 as well. Now I'm going to do the same process here for when k is equal to negative 2 and alpha is going to be equal to negative 1. I can substitute the value of k into here to come up with the quadratic that I'm looking for. And then in order to find the roots, I can just go ahead and substitute the value of alpha here to come up with x is equal to negative 1 or x is equal to negative 2. So, notice that what's happening then is that by knowing the sum of the roots and the product of the roots, given the roots, I can then go ahead and find information about what the original quadratic equation was. Okay, so let's go ahead and summarize here. Remember in previous sections, we started off with quadratics, quadratic equations, and the question was find the roots. In this particular section, you're given the roots, how do you find a quadratic? And what we've shown here with this example is that if you remember what the sum of the roots is for a quadratic, and the product of the roots is for a quadratic, and can link that to the actual a, b, and c of your general quadratic equation, then you should be able to find 
your general quadratic, your specific quadratic equation rather simply. Okay, so we'll go ahead and take a look at some examples in class, and we'll see you next time. See you later. Bye-bye.